You ready? Sounds good. All right, now here we go, man. Let me get this. All right. So five, four, three, two, and one. All right, folks, welcome back to the Trauma Therapist Podcast. Scott McPherson here. I am very excited to have as my guest today, Niall McKeever. Niall, welcome. Thanks for having me, Guy. It's, it's great to be here. All right, man, you are welcome. So Niall is an entrepreneur and psychology student from Northern Ireland. He's passionate about making great ideas more accessible. Mm-hmm. He's a founder of the Weekend University an alternative education project, which aims to make the most important ideas in psychology more accessible. To do this, he organizes monthly conferences featuring presentations from world leading psychologists, professors, and authors. Niall is currently completing his MSc in psychology at the University of Stirling in Scotland. All right. So before we get going here, Niall, uh, share with the listeners where you're from originally and where you're calling from now. Okay, so I'm originally from a place called Limavady in County Derry in Northern Ireland. Um, and I'm actually, at the minute, I'm home. I'm doing like a, a big cycle from the, the top of the country to the bottom in a couple of weeks. So I'm back home at the minute training for that. So that's actually where I'm joining from. But I'm usually based in Glasgow in Scotland. But the weekend university, actually, whenever we're doing live events outside of pandemic times, we're usually based in London. So that's kind of that's where we're at. I suppose. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So I first became aware of you. I saw um, some post or ad, whatever of, of a conference you guys have coming up. Right. And it has, well, it has Linda Curran in it. And I interviewed Linda, Linda, and she's amazing. And I was like, wow, what is this? And then I looked further and I saw the weekend university. And then we got into, and I thought it was incredible. And this is what this podcast is about. I mean, you're doing something really amazing. You're putting, you created this program, this weekend university, and you're putting on conferences. And so first of all, congratulations. I mean, I think it's awesome. Um, But give us, uh, we'll talk more about this later, but give our listeners a snippet of what this conference is about and when it is. Okay. So you're talking about the specific, the conference on healing trauma? Yes. Or, okay, so we've got, um, we're running a two-part event. Uh, the first part is actually this Sunday. Um, by the time this gets out to your listeners, it's probably already been passed. Um, but we're basically, we're running a, a two-part conference all around sort of different evidence-based approaches for healing trauma. So the first day we're going to be covering uh, EMDR. Um, we're going to be covering post-traumatic growth. And we're going to be covering... Uh, polyvagal theory so that's going to be a talk from deb deb dana on that there and then on the second day we're, we're going to be looking at schema therapy how that can be applied to to treat trauma um, we're going to be looking at yoga and the, the mind body connection and how that can be used to treat trauma and the final talk is on it's uh it's, it's slipping my mind right now uh what is it it's okay. People can people can go to the, the website. What's how can they find out about it or even future conferences? Yeah, if you just go to the weekenduniversity.com forward slash events, you can see all of our upcoming events and also all of our past events there as well. Okay. All right. So let's start. How that why how did you start this? Why did you start this? So when I was around, I'm 29 now. Whenever I was around 24. Um, I was working for a startup in London and in my head, I kind of thought, you know, that would really excite me. That would be a really meaningful kind of career path to be in. I thought it'd be really stimulating and enjoyable. But when I was actually there, I actually found myself quite miserable. I just wasn't enjoying life. I was just stressed out all the time, just working like crazy long hours. And in my spare time, I was, uh, reading a lot around psychology, watching a lot of psychology lectures online. I sort of think, you know, I'm really interested in this. Like this feels like something really intrinsic, something I'm really motivated by. So I was like, right, will I go back and do a degree in psychology at the University of London? Like, was that, is that what I should do? But in the UK, you know, to do that, it's like, you're talking about at least 27,000 pound in tuition fees. You're talking about three years in time. So it's just this, this huge investment. And I was like, I'm not really sure what exactly I'm going to do after. So it just, it just seemed like too risky to just to do that, just to mm-hmm. stop doing what I'm doing. So then I started to think, you know, 
maybe there's other people that are like me that are in a similar situation that are really interested in you know psychology and the human mind but they're not ready to go back into full-time education just yet so then i started getting these ideas like what if you know what if i create this week this weekend university where people can come and get a full day of talks um, from like leading psychologists professors and authors and they don't have to have this sort of huge upfront investment and they can just sort of get the best bits of a university education without um, without spending huge amounts of time and money. So it's just sort of a way to like dip your toe in the water without, um, without breaking the bank. So basically we started organizing these monthly conferences at the University of London. It was actually the university where I was actually going to go study at. That's where we ran our events at. And we did- So these were live events? Live events in okay. person in, in central London. And it was just like, you know, the first event um, of this sort of format and everything, it was just, sometimes you just got, you just have a, a gut feeling about something and you just go with it. And I just, I went for it. And I think I caught a few lucky breaks, but we had like over 150 people at the first event. And then the following month we had over 200. Okay, 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 wait, wait. You're, you're going too fast for me. Hold on. So I want to get all this down. First of all, why, what was so interesting to you about psychology? Um, a few different things. Um, in my own family, you know, we, we, someone had, someone got depression and then just see, seeing, um, seeing her suffer and feeling completely powerless to do anything about it. And we just didn't really know how to approach it. The, there isn't that the access where we're, where we're from to, to psychological therapies and stuff isn't that, um, is not accessible. So we just, I think we just felt really part of us and that always just kind of stuck with me. And then f- for me, like I, I come from a business background, but like, it's like a, it's like a family business, but I never was interested in, in going in there. And mm-hmm. I always just wanted to do work that I was passionate about and, and motivated by. And I kind of set the goal for myself in my early twenties. I, re- I remember the moment when I, when I just, I just came up with the, the goal. It was just like, I, I want to start a business that helps people improve their lives. I just think that's worth doing, you know, when you're, you're doing that through your own work as, as well guy. And I think it's just something, you know, life has a lot, life is hard, is hard. Like there's a lot of suffering in life and you've, I, I think you've got to be doing something that, that can sustain you through that and can make your experience uh, meaningful throughout, you know, and, doing this project like i've tried a lot of stuff and failed a lot of stuff but uh this is something i've felt really aligned with from day one and it's been a lot of work but um it has not felt like that it's felt it's been enjoyable for from day one so so yeah i hope that kind of answers your question yeah and i appreciate that and um it's it's just really inspiring i mean i think one of the things that kind of inspired me and, and attracted me to you was that I kind of saw myself, you know, you're kind of merging this entrepreneurial spirit with this interest in psychology and trying to, tr- trying to make a difference. So you said you had 150 people. Share. How did you get people? How did you get your, your, the people to speak the people to your professors and so forth? How did, how did that all come about? So how I got the speakers, um, the company, my initial speakers, the company I was working for before in London, they are an events company. So I had built up um, a couple of connections there. One, one was a guy called uh, Dr. David Luke from the University of Greenwich. And he speaks around um, psychedelic, psychedelic therapy. And this was a very popular topic at the time and just super interesting. So he actually spoke at my first event. Um, I was really into Jungian psychology at the time. Uh, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. <laughs> um, but no, I that's just, right. <laughs> I just emailed loads of uh, loads of potential speakers to give a talk on uh, Carl Jung and the psychology of religion, which was just, I don't know, I was really interested in it. And, and then another talk was on uh, just mental health and culture and our kind of cultural perceptions around around mental health. So as, as I said earlier, you know, when you try something, you've no idea if it's going to work or not. Mm-hmm. And whenever the event was going, it was just like for the first time in I would say about six months or something, I just could breathe out and just go, 
this is working you know it's it just <laughs> such a relief and i'm sure like you've started your own project you've had that so kind of similar experience yourself oh yeah oh yeah it's uh i mean i part of me feels just like it's kind of a ridiculous question you know how do you get your speakers you you ask them right you just simply call them up and you ask them or email them and you ask them so you know you had some connections and they came and you said 150 people showed up to your first one yeah which yeah. is crazy how did you get the people um for that one it was a combination um of just um figuring out organizations that and uh communities and bloggers and people that would already have a community of people that would be interested in this kind of event and then just you know picking up the phone or, or writing an email and offering them some kind of like like discount for their community or mm -hmm. things like that there like it wasn't like it was it was a lot of work a lot yeah. of um yeah. a lot of cold calling a lot of cold emailing but it, it paid off you know and yeah that's kind of how we how we approached it now when was that first one so one. That, that was december 2017 so we've done one every month since then and oh, all wow. of these so all of these lectures are available on our youtube channel youtube channel for free of charge if anybody wants to check okay them out as and well. that's the weekend university go to youtube and just type in the weekend university yeah you'll find stuff there you'll find stuff there in trauma as well if we've, okay. we've had talk, talks from like richard schwartz uh deb dana we've had talks in somatic experiencing um we had one on expressive writing and trauma from james pennebacher one from lucy johnson in the uk um on her sort of power threat meaning framework um which i think has been a very important uh publication in the field as well so there's there's stuff stuff around trauma and within within our youtube channel as well mm -hmm. um how did you get in touch with linda curran how did i get in touch with linda um I think it was just searching online and then I find her website trauma101.com right, which right, is a right. great sort of resource for yep. trauma therapists and everything um and then I just it takes a long time well sometimes it takes a while to find an email but I eventually just found the email and got in touch and she said said yes so yeah okay. yeah that's awesome awesome so during during this process as you've been doing this for a while now what have you learned in a sense what kind of impact has it had on you in terms of the psychology that you're learning you, know, you talked about someone in your family you had depression and that was kind of making you feel almost helpless and i can completely relate to that but i'm just curious with all this you're doing yes there's the business side but i'm sure there's also information you're getting from osmosis you know about psychology and so forth what's that like for you um i would say a couple of things here so i've learned recently that there's a bit of a link between entrepreneurship and adhd right so basically i love my business because it gives me the opportunity to continuously explore new topics and dip into something for a while and you know explore if i'm curious about it and then if i'm interested i can go a bit deeper but if not i can sort of move on to the next thing you know so what is commonly a weakness in most areas of life has actually been a strength for this because it's kept things kept things fresh we've covered so many different topics but in terms of what i've learned maybe from osmosis and everything um so i'm from northern ireland and it's a very sort of like stiff upper lip culture in the sense that you know like if you were maybe a bit down when you were a kid you'd be just be told to like stop being sorry for yourself or you know the, these kind of things like there wasn't much it wouldn't really be safe to be vulnerable in our culture you know especially being being a man and something i've found to be one of the most powerful ideas um in out of all the things we've covered is self-compassion so if you look at the work of like Kristen neff or professor paul gilbert in the uk the founder of compassion focused therapy just developing a, a compassionate relationship with yourself i think is maybe one of the most underrated things that anybody could ever do and this is i think this is the potential to really transform tr transform your experience of life you know and then 
another thing too is we did this uh this summit last summer this summer have you have you done a summit before no you should definitely do one um you 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 got the perfect um setup for it but sorry anyway um we did a summit last summer and it was it was all around holistic change so just looking at like all the different approaches from psychology that can help people actually change and the thing that kept coming up over and over again is that we think of ourselves as these sort of like these individuals you know I am Niall McKeever or you are Guy McPherson but really so many different approaches to psychology emphasize that we are multiple you know there's multiple different parts to us and really psychological health is being is a being aware of that and then figuring out a way to get those different parts of you sort of moving together and moving mm-hmm. in sync you know if you look at things like internal family systems or like there's whole therapies based on this idea and i think those two things together are probably if if i'm talking off the top of my head the, the two things that come to mind whenever it comes to mm-hmm. what's been most come through wow well, yeah i love that so you talked about developing more compassion for ourselves what does that look like for you for me it's it's, and, and for uh, everyone, what do you, when you say that, what do you mean? It's being, I think the, f- the first thing you have to do whenever you, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an expert on this. I want to really emphasize that, but you can't, I don't think you can really develop this kind of self-compassion unless you first have a, a, a base of mindfulness first. So you have to become aware of your, your um, internal self-talk. And for me, whenever I did develop a mindfulness practice, I would notice like just throughout the day, like if I had maybe done some meditation that morning, I was, I was shocked by my internal self-talk, like the, the, just like beating myself up in my head. Like, it was just like, I would never ever talk to anybody else like that. So why am I, you know, how, right. why am I talking to myself like that? So even now, you know, I still, I still have it, but it's definitely less. So, but then whenever it does happen now, I'll just sort of like, I'll just be aware of it and then maybe i laugh about it or i'm just, or uh i'll just sort of it, it sounds ridiculous to say i can't even say this but i'll just say something nice to myself internally just sort of like to um balance it you know like you're doing well or like if i'm doing a bit of training like if i'm doing a bit of exercise um my self-talk will be it's not like i'm beating myself up it's more like it's sort of like you know we've got this or we can do this or whatever it's more supportive mm-hmm. just to hear you're sort of in a supportive relationship with yourself, which again, sounds a bit crazy, but it kind of works for me. I don't, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, it does, it can sound crazy when you, when you verbalize this stuff out loud, but it's not, we've all got the crap going on in our head. And we're, what you're talking about here is developing this within the context of having compassion for ourselves is developing this self-awareness, right? The first step of, of how are we, talking to ourselves because it's so important and every single moment whether we realize it or not we are we got this stuff going on and i I, and i think that's that's awesome because it it's vital to be aware of that um so and then okay so that was self-compassion and then the second thing was these different parts being aware of these different parts of ourselves yeah when you were talking about that i immediately was thinking of ifs internal family systems um specifically what are you seeing for yourself what what parts have you become aware of you know you mentioned this entrepreneurial side and the psychology side this is actually a bit of a this is a bit of a problem for me actually if i'm just being honest um i a big part of me is really like you know loves the entrepreneur side of things and the business side of things but another part of me is really interested in uh, psychology and actually, you know, potentially doing work in this field at, at some point in the future. And I just have to be very careful not to let um, one sort of part of me sort of get out of balance and, you know, take over the show. And I like, there's been ta- like, I'm doing this, this degree at the minute, it's a conversion degree in psychology. And I've taken a leave of absence from before just to focus on the business. And I went back after doing that but it was just one part of me sort of um i suppose got the better of me and um i i regretted it and it was the wrong decision and decided to go back and and study after so i think 
just being aware that that we do have these different parts of ourselves that want different things at different times and trying to take a sort of holistic view of your life and take a long-term view of your life and think, you know, I might want this now, but in the future, I'm probably going to want other things as well. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, I don't know if that's making sense, but that's it of... is. And as you're saying that now, I'm thinking to myself, you know, sometimes I think balance is very elusive. And I think we, we trick ourselves into thinking, we have to have, we have to be like juggling, you know, the flaming machetes of life. And it's sometimes it's impossible to have that balance. And sometimes these one part of ourselves does step up. And I think, you know, I mean, personally speaking, I think that's okay. I think it's sometimes very impossible to think that, you know, I can have this one part of myself, you know, owning this, this certain percentage of my life and another part of myself owning the same percentage um, and I think that is part of understanding and owning who we are and what our strengths are, um, you know, and, and that's not always easy, you know, and sometimes we have to let things go a little bit and that can be really scary and freaky. What does it mean that, you know, you know, I got this doctorate in clinical psychology and here I am doing this podcast you know, I've had to come to terms with that. Um, and I think that journey, we have to, I think I'm speaking personally, I think I have to be able to own that and learn to, to kind of come into that and what that means for me. You know, um, I love uh, Richard, you know, Richard Schwartz's work with IFS, and that really helped me when I was, it helps me all the time. But I, I remember when I was seeing my therapist, it really helped me. I think it's a very, he says something, he says, you know, all parts are welcome. And I love that, you know. So anyway, I appreciate, I appreciate, appreciate what you're saying. Um, and I think it's phenomenal what you're doing. I mean, I wanted to bring you on here because I think it's really inspiring. You know, I remember when I first started, um, you know, my podcast, I don't know if I share this with you, but I was doing a lot of commuting. I was commuting to my internships and I was listening to a lot of podcasts with entrepreneurs, just like yourself, who were doing this stuff, stepping up and creating programs for other people. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Not everyone does that, right? And not everyone needs to. But there are people out there who are thinking, oh, man, I'd love to do what Niall's doing. But for whatever reason, don't or can't or but but you stepped up and, and you did it. Was there a lot of fear there for you? Um, before before I did it, before, I think before you do anything new, um, I'm sure you're aware of this yourself. There's there's always a tremendous amount of uncertainty and yeah there was there was fear there but for me the alternative um was more scary for me the alternative of just sort of playing it safe and just not sort of st stepping out into the i'm doing inverted commas here like into the wilderness and you know just having just trying to make an adventure of life you know i think that's kind of what we're here for we're here to have a as much as possible to have uh, an exciting experience and um, I really wanted that in my life and it was worth taking the risk to do that, you know? And, but the thing is, is that whenever you, it's, it's almost cliche to say, but like, honestly, whenever you make up your mind to do something and you really just make the decision and you, you commit to it, um, that kind of goes away. You've just sort of put it behind you and you're just in the thick of life and you're, uh, you're flowing with it and it's great. And there's loads of times I'm sure everybody experiences this where you're sort of before that moment of making the decision and that's the worst part but as soon as you've done that as soon as you've you know pulled the trigger or whatever um it's not that it's all like easy after but it, you you just there's no more ruminating in your head about am mm -hmm. i doing the right thing am i not you're just in the flow of action and that's i think that's kind of where we're supposed to be you know mm -hmm. was there any um you know what they call imposter syndrome you know who am i to do this you know i'm not uh, Bruce Perry or Bessel van der Kolk, how am I supposed to put on a, a trauma conference when I'm a student? Was there any of that? Um, yeah, I suppose so. But 
I I'm not like a I'm not like a big personality sort of thing like I you know I think it was a lot easier like see if I was doing this all myself and like trying to create all the content like myself I think it would be a lot harder but really I just focused on getting great speakers and you know that that kind of reduced the imposter syndrome mm -hmm. and I would obviously introduce him at the start but I remember like you know getting up on stage and introducing them and talking about the project and being like terrified you know like getting in front of a hall full of people you're just like what am I doing but it's so exhilarated as well like this it just felt like whoa what just happened you know like what what has just happened to my life you know right. so uh yeah good fun that's awesome all right so who who do you, who's the who's the weekend university for it's for I, I suppose it started off for people that were just interested in psychology but as we've organized more and more of these psychology events um the majority of our audience are actually mental health professionals and they they attend the they attend the lectures they they get um continuing professional development so in the uk that's cpd and therapists have to demonstrate that they're you know continuously investing in their ongoing education mm -hmm. i think you guys have c c e c e's c e's yeah yeah it's a similar thing so or ceus rather ceus um yeah. so a lot of um because our events are quite low cost as well, people basically get to come and like maybe, you know, get talks from the likes of Professor Paul Gilbert or Richard Schwartz or whatever for a day. And they're not paying that much. And they're, you know, it's a good day out as well. Like, I think like our audience ranges in age so much as well. Like we get students going, but we also get people in their sixties and seventies going as well. And we get people in the middle too. And it's just like, they get to go back and, be a student for the day you know like mm -hmm. it's like being a university student you're actually in a lecture theater and yeah it's it's good fun so i would say just sorry to answer your question mainly it's for mental health professionals or anybody doing any kind of one-on-one -on -one work where they are um they're just helping people to sort of improve their lives and that's kind of why i love what we do because you know if we can like you're doing as well you know if we can train or if we can help to facilitate education between these great teachers and people that are helping people, you're, you're helping helpers and it has mm -hmm. exponential effects. So let's say you help a therapist that works with 50 clients in their lifetime. Like that's not just one person that benefits from the education. It's, it's potentially 50 people, you know, right. so it's worth, it's work worth doing, I think. That's awesome. So you talked about the live events is, are these events online also? Can people watch virtually or what? Um, so at the minute, everything is online because of because of the pandemic. Um, okay. In the future, whenever we can go back to doing live events, it's going to be a hybrid. So we're going to do the actual live event in the University of London, but we're going to live stream it to anybody that wants to tune in remotely because with people sort of coming from America and I with people in Australia, New Zealand. So we want to make sure we keep that keep a service going for those guys too. Awesome. All right, Niall, what's the best way for people to uh, get in contact with you? Um, if you just go to the weekenduniversity.com, um, there's contact information on there. That's probably the best way, best way All to right. get in touch. Awesome. Awesome. Dude. So inspiring. I love it. Um, it's a pleasure having you on here. And you mentioned, uh, I don't know if you, we did this on as we were recording, but you mentioned, uh, a bike ride you're taking. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, how far is that? How long is that? It's uh, so it's from the very top of Ireland to the very bottom. Um, it's called Top to Toe. It's it's actually to raise money for uh, for Marie Curie, um, the for terminal illness. So that starts now in a couple of weeks, wow. and yeah, super excited about that. Just awesome. To have a, How many miles is it? Forward to. Um, I'm not sure because we sort of we do it over the course of seven days. Okay. Um, it's not like you know one of these ultra triathlon like iron man things like it's it's gonna to be tough but not right. like a killer you know right. awesome awesome man it was great pleasure talking to you and love to have you back um and uh, just thank you for what you're doing you're inspiring a lot of people out there guy it's been my pleasure thank you for some great questions it's been it's been a lot of fun to talk to you today all right man take care thanks